Coming up next on the Jeff Curley Show, he has uh, won the Rose Bowl, he has played in the NFL, he has been to the mountaintop, and now he inspires others to climb their own mountain. His journey just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is The Jeff Crilly Show. Well, I don't know about you, but I worry about this next generation, the young people who went through COVID. There's all kinds of mental health issues in, in our nation's junior highs and high schools. And uh, to many uh, degrees, it's not being addressed by the school systems. They're just not equipped. So often they bring in a young man like my next guest, uh, Keith Davis with Winners Inc. Yes. to inspire the young people. Keith, thanks for coming on the show. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Looking forward to <laughs> just encouraging the people who are listening today. Well, we're blessed to have him in studio because he's normally running around the globe speaking. You've yes. spoken in 64 countries? 64 countries all throughout Africa. Actually, I have a trip uh, on the 9th to Liberia, Africa, all throughout Asia, South America, Europe, uh, and Australia. No yeah. kidding. No kidding. Okay, more on his speaking career in a minute. But Keith, why don't you set the stage? Uh, Where did you grow up? So I grew up in the inner city of Los Angeles, California, got a chance to... Uh, play college football at the University of Southern California. But that journey was an incredible story that I share quite a bit when I'm speaking. I went to more than 19 different schools all over Los Angeles and came up with a family that dealt with quite a few challenges when it came to addiction, uh, alcohol abuse, drug abuse, and domestic violence. So my story is a story of hope for young people and parents who may be dealing with situations that may seemingly look like they're holding them back, but I let them know that all things are possible, if you can believe. What did football represent for you? Because you played in the Rose Bowl, you, yeah. you played for the New York Giants. Yeah, so football, um, obviously I didn't get a chance to play very long in the NFL, and as you know, football is a very rough sport, but football represented for me a opportunity to, um, obviously an opportunity to get a great education. So I graduated with the highest overall grade point average from the University of Southern Cal, but it also represented a way for me to have a voice or a platform to be able to encourage multiple uh, people, millions of young people and then prisoners alike. I do a lot of work in prisons and juvenile centers as well. And you're very relatable because you've been there. I know yeah. there's so many speakers who are out there and uh, they don't listen to their own stuff. Yeah. And uh, you've yeah, walked yeah. more than a mile yeah, in yeah. most people's yeah, shoes. Definitely, definitely. Let's, let's go ahead and show this clip. Hi, my name is Keith Davis. I'm a speaker with Just Say Yes. I have a unique program that can actually communicate very effectively with an incredible amount of energy and interaction. Everybody say the word dream. dream. Now, in order to say that word, we have to understand that there's some things that go with that word. Everyone say this. Everyone say the word choices. Everyone say the word voices. So I have to understand that I cannot get to my great dream until I understand that I got to make some right choices by listening to right voices. I realized that in this nation, young people needed role models that were people that were committed to character. People look at me and they say, Keith, you're from South Central LA, your father did drugs, your mama did drugs, nobody in your family ever been to college and you were living in those raggedy apartments. How did you go from there to one of the wealthiest universities in the state of California? You could hardly read and how did you go from there to graduating the very highest? How did that happen? And I simply look and say this, there was a statement that was made that changed my life and the statement goes like this. Keith, you're not born a winner. And Keith, you're not born a loser either. You're not born a winner or a loser, you are born a chooser. I love a message called effort, education, and excellence. Everybody repeat three words with me. Everybody say effort. effort. 
Every day you gotta give great effort. Everybody say education. I'm reaching higher, I'm pushing more. Everybody say excellence. When I had another young man who was in the 12th grade and he was ready to drop out and I said, you gotta finish the race. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. And then we had another young lady and she just said, after your assembly today, I used to feel like I was ugly. I felt like my life was worth nothing, but today I have hope, I have courage, I have inspiration. Thank you for your words. It was one of the best assemblies I've ever had. And that's what it's all about. And we're passionate about it. And we do it in a way that relates to their world an energetic and fun and exciting way and yet very, very, very meaningful and very introspective in some of the choices they're making. So inspiring. I, yeah. I, true confession, I told Keith just before the show I wanted to do this show standing on his back <laughs> as he did push-ups. He says, maybe not to do that. <laughs> uh, when did you learn that you knew how to speak? So uh, I started speaking when I was about 19 years old. I was a college student and I just felt like we're playing in the Coliseum in front of 90,000 people every week. Um, but we're in this community. And as you know, USC is a wealthy school in a really rough community. What can we do to help those around? And so I just started with what I had. Uh, I don't play the piano. I don't sing, but I was strong and I was a player. So I used what I had and I think what I had uh, begin to multiply and inspire others. And I, I guess I realized I was good when people just continued to invite me and invite me. And the next thing you know, I went from LA to New York, to Florida, to England, to Australia. And the next thing you know, it's been 30 years later and 64 countries later. Well, you, you have the heart of a preacher, and, I, and it occurs to me that the skills that it takes to be successful on the football field are completely different than the skills it takes to be an effective speaker. Uh, I don't know. I think, I think the thing you have to have to be a great player is passion. Mm -hmm. I think the thing you have to have to be a great parent is passion. The thing you have to have to be a great teacher or educator or administrator is passion. And I think the... The problem is that many uh, schools, educators, young people and parents, they're not connecting with young people because there's no passion. Young people, they don't, and I'm gonna say what a man told me years ago, which I live by, he said, people don't hear what you say, they feel what you say. Mm. And so it's caused me to be extremely effective because whether they're rich or poor, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, Native American, is something that happens in my programs where they connect. And I think that's the difference between, as you mentioned, a lot of speakers is the ability to connect and inspire. So I had a school in Texas, they were getting ready for their star exam. And the next thing you know, uh, that star exam is very important for the, the ranking of the school. And they were the lowest ranked. And when I spoke, they had the highest improvement in the state of wow. Texas. And so, they were like, what happened here? You know, and so it brought all of those students up. And the next thing you know, every school in Texas was contacting me to, can you come? But it was a connection that happened through the passion. So I think that's the thing that every great player has and every great person and every great newscaster. Well, well, thank you. <laughs> uh, well, you clearly have a gift from God, and yeah. I'm glad that you're sharing it with the world. It also occurs to me that, you know, when you're, when you're speaking to, you know, a, a student audience, you never know who you're reaching. That's Your true. wife, just before the show, showed me an email that you got from a young lady who basically said, everything I want to say, I can't say on a three yes, by five yes, card. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and she just talked about how uh, life changing your speech yeah, was. Yeah. That's got to feel good. Yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> you know, it's the, the, how can I say it? Um, when you play a game and you win, especially when you win at the last minute. It's nothing like that feeling. So a lot of my, in a lot of my school speeches, I do a lot of colleges as well and NCAA teams, but in a lot of schools, I always share a story of us playing a game and actually, believe it or not, they had a great quarterback that you're familiar with here in Dallas, but I won't get into all that. But we came back, we had a horrible first half. It was horrendous. The crowd booed us, we had zero. And we came back and came back in the last minute, won the game. And the exhilaration of winning that was something that was so unreal. 
you know, the feeling, the crowd, the news cameras, the yes. interviews. And the same thing happens when you speak and you realize that it's changed somebody's life. So it, it's a reward other than what maybe somebody's paying you or what company brought you there. It's the reward, the internal reward that uh, causes you to keep going. And it's the same reward I think that educators get from a kid who comes back and the one that was totally counted out the one that no one gave a chance to had any hope for, but all of a sudden, you know, they're the doctor now or the lawyer and they're coming back to say thank you. So, you know, I think we all in our life, we look for that purpose, that meaning, that passion to make our lives count before we leave this earth. So, and I, you know, I did a lot of speaking in my life, but I was, uh, and I couldn't hold a candle to you. And you're speaking to what I would argue would be the most uh, difficult audience. Young people are hard yeah. to impress. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, yeah. you can talk to any uh, speaker <laughs> yeah. and say, I'm going to yeah. send you yeah. to a high school. Yeah. And they're yeah. like, no, yeah. 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 <laughs> not a high school. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so we got some pictures yeah. off of Keith's Facebook that we want to share. Uh, what does that feel like when, when they're all uh, on their feet cheering and you know that you've, you've reached them? What does that feel like? Well, we actually have a joke among uh, other, I have a whole group of players that we speak together with. And the joke is when you're speaking in front of 1,500 kids at three in the afternoon in a gym with no air conditioning and a mic that doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> in an inner city school. Yes. <laughs> okay, so yes. what does that feel like? You can't describe it. But that being said, it's... Uh, and you it's, do, you do it, feats of strength. <laughs> Yeah, we do some things that are interactive, connecting, uh, just, and all these are visual aids that go along with the message. So this message is a message called PUSH, P-U-S-H, persevere until success happens. Mm. Uh, we have the other one where we're lifting the kids, it's called hold on to your dreams. So I'm lifting, this is a prison, the largest prison in South America, Louis Gancho, more than 13,000 men in one prison, and yet they are all captivated. So we always say, if you can speak in a school, and in a prison, then you can speak anywhere because those are the, the hardest audiences in the world to speak to. Absolutely. But I think I love those the most because when you go in, something has to happen because yeah. they're not going to listen to point A, B, and C. It well, just has to be something that magically happens. I know you're here. a believer and yeah. um, your, uh, your NFL career was short-lived yeah, yeah. and, and I have to believe that God had a better, bigger plan. Yeah. And it's funny, uh, you know, I, I, I signed my professional contract with the New York Giants. And at that time, New York Giants, uh, who would have known that years later, out of all the teams I could have went to, it was a team with Hall of Fame coach and then Bill Belichick, Hall of Fame assistant coach, and then all these other Hall of Fame players. But I was there just enough for, you know, whatever that platform would be a recognition. But I think there is uh, definitely a, there was definitely a plan to use that platform to open the door for me to again go into many other yes. schools and colleges and teams and just change young people's lives. So. We talked earlier in this broadcast about the idea that young people um, are troubled. I mean, we, we had yeah. a pandemic, we sent everybody home, yeah. you had remote yeah, yeah, learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that that is gonna play out over the course of time and there's probably some undiagnosed uh, mental health issues. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what I'm hearing now, and again, I'm in schools every day, you know, every day of the week pretty much, uh, from I'm hearing from teachers, parents, administrators, is, and the kids themselves, uh, the levels of depression, suicidal thoughts, uh, hopelessness are, are rampant now. So I think our voice now and the voice of my, not just myself, but all those around the nation who are doing work to inspire this generation. Maybe they're an after school uh, teacher, maybe they're a coach at a local recreation center. I don't know what role it may be, but many people have roles in the lives of this generation. And I think that all of us together collectively have to use the gifts that we have to bring this nation and this generation of young people up a little bit higher because it's really taken a toll on them. Uh, and you can see it just by the studies that have been done since that situation has happened with the pandemic. Absolutely. We, we are almost out of time. I know there's a lot of parents who watch this show. Uh, I want you to look into that camera on the sure. left and talk to the parent who's worried about their kid. Uh, what do you say to them? So I would say, first of all, to the parent, um, I would, uh, I'm going to encourage you to do something that goes to another realm. And that realm is what I call the supernatural. 
which is taking your natural and adding some super to it. So I don't know if you pray, meditate, or who your guidance may be through, but I would encourage you to pray and ask God to really intervene in the heart and mind of your child because there's a deeper level than just some uh, encouraging things to say, do good and help them do this. So I'm, I'm going to ask you to do that. Uh, secondly, I'm going to ask each parent, just like as players, we, we get a lot of coaching to help us perfect our, our gift and our skill. And I know many, many, many schools have programs that can help you connect and communicate with your child because there's a huge communication gap that's going on now with this generation. And then last of all, I would just encourage the parents to find that one thing that inspires you. So each day you wake up uh, to have some words of encouragement, words of hope, because I cannot give what I don't have. Mm. So if you want your child to have vision, then you have to have vision. You want your child to have hope or encouragement, then you need to have some to give to them. Uh, and then I just wanna let you know it's gonna be okay. Uh, one of my messages always is called the second half. And that just simply is no matter what's happened in the first half, it's never over till it's over. All of us can have a great second half. Uh, my life has been a representation of that, had a horrendous first half with all of the issues that I went through. But we, you, your child, we can all have a great second half. Wow. That's yeah, a great yeah, way to end yeah, this yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope yeah. God richly yeah. blesses your ministry. Yeah. We're going to end with the website, which is just say yes.org forward slash Keith dash Davis. Yes. The great Keith Davis. Thanks yeah. for coming on the show. I right. appreciate it. Thank you. It's that's been a pleasure. For, that's it for thank now. You. We'll thank see you next time.